So how do you know which frequencies to apply EQ at to improve a sound? Or how much boost or cut to use? Well, as I said, ultimately you learn through experience. But here are a few guidelines to get started. The first thing to do is to begin to get the tonal quality of different frequency ranges in your head, so you can recognize areas of a sound that you may want or need to address with EQ. Let me start with a drum kit. The different drums and cymbals, with their strong overtones, contain energy at a wide range of frequencies within that 20 to 20k range of hearing. You remember the broad frequency ranges I referred to earlier. Lows, low mids, mids, high mids, and highs. Musicians and engineers have a kind of descriptive jargon they often use to describe the sound quality within these ranges. Let's start there. But before I do, let me address the other consideration besides frequency range. How much boost or cut should be applied? Well, there are no hard and fast rules. It depends on the sound, the recording, the mix. But in general, with natural acoustic sounds, a few dB boost or cut, like around 3 or 4 dB or so, is easily enough to make a noticeable change and get the job done. Too much EQ can make the sound start to seem overprocessed and unnatural. But there are exceptions. Electric or electronic instruments, like electric guitar or bass or synthesizers, can take a lot of EQ without sounding like it's been overdone. And drums can often accept much stronger boosts or cuts and sound good. In fact, most drums we hear on commercial recordings are EQ'd and compressed to sound fairly hyped compared to the actual sound of a live drum kit in a room. But that's usually what we're going for. Keep an eye on the amount of gain applied as I go through these EQ examples. The kick drum is the lowest pitched instrument in a drum kit with a fundamental frequency from around 50 to 100 hertz or so and overtones above that. EQing in the low frequency range up to about 200 hertz can change the quality of that deepest part of the kick's tone. You can boost or cut. I'll start off by boosting. If I add some EQ at 50 hertz, the tone becomes deep. Move the center frequency up to 100 to 150 hertz, and instead it might be described as boomy. Up again to 200 hertz, and a common description would be punchy. So if a musician or producer asks for more depth or less punch, you'd have a pretty good idea of which frequency range to go to. Moving up to the mid-range, I'll start EQing the snare drum as well. Sounds that have a lot of mid-range energy are often described as sounding boxy. Stick your head in a cardboard box and speak, and you'll immediately see why. The resonance within the box is based on the size of the enclosure, and this is true with instruments also, especially drums. If I boost at various lower, mid, and mid-range frequencies, you can hear the particular quality of boxiness associated with the different frequency ranges. But in mixing, too much mid-range energy in any one instrument might not leave enough room, tonally, for other tracks to be heard as clearly as you'd like. So it's pretty common to cut mids, especially when the instruments have been close mic'd. Let me run through the mid-frequencies again, this time cutting, which would be a very common approach when EQing drums. EQ in the range around 2 to 3 kHz is sometimes described as imparting a nasal quality. This can be good or bad. Listen as I EQ the drums a bit, and maybe a little piano as well, in the upper mids. A boost around 5 kHz and just above is often referred to as adding presence which can make an instrument or voice seem closer, more forward in a mix. Many vocal mics have such a boost of a few dB built into the design to help the vocal project above the band.
cutting the upper mids can make a sound recede or give it a less brittle quality. Listen to how cutting the snare at around 2 kHz lessens the tinny quality and gives it a fatter sound. See how boosting the kick drum at around 4 kHz emphasizes the slap of the beater hitting the drum skin, adding a little definition to the kick's attack. The treble, or high frequency range, adds or subtracts brightness or crispness. But there are different qualities of bright. Listen as I add a little treble from 6K up to about 10K. Notice how the quality of brightness is different as the center frequency is moved. Boosting the very high end from around 12 to 14K and up can be very subtle, since the overtones and harmonics up there in most instruments are fairly weak, and so is our hearing. But it can add a little of what's often called air, the quality of openness and greater three-dimensionality. On the other hand, since many instruments, like say kick drum or electric bass or guitar, don't have much harmonic or overtone content that high up, rolling off the high end can clean up those tracks, removing any high frequency noise or leakage without really impacting the tone of the instrument. Now, all these descriptive terms I've been using are in pretty common use in the studio for subjectively describing the different tonal qualities of different frequency ranges. Next up, I'll continue with EQ by giving some examples of typical approaches to EQing a few instruments and applying EQ in context of a mix.